I have the title of my lesson is An Indestructible Child. I was looking at a honey badger over the week, watching a documentary on this little animal. And it's one of the, I won't say indestructible because he can be killed, mm -hmm. but just looking at the nature of this animal, he's not fearful about anything. No, sir. God made him in a way, I watched him wrestle with a lion. Mm -hmm. And it took that lion over an hour just to kill him. Mm -hmm. Because God made him mm -hmm. in a way that he could withstand mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Even to the point where his favorite food is cold with snakes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He would fight the most poisonous snake. Yeah. And during the fight, the snake would bite him. Mm -hmm. But he would go on and kill the snake. <laughs> and once he killed the snake, he would go off and he would lay down. Uh -huh. And it would appear as though he's dead. But what he's doing, he's giving time for that poison to get out of his system. And once the poison leaves his system, he wakes up and he goes back to the snake that he killed and he ate him. And I says, man, this animal looks as if nothing can kill him. I said, but God made him. Then I started reading over in the book of Peter when he was writing to the church. And he told the church, you was not born of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. I said, wait a minute. God, what are you trying to tell me? Yes, sir. Brandon, that you are indestructible child. Indestructible. Amen. And when I started thinking about that, I said, but God, wait a minute. If I'm indestructible, why do things get to me the way it does? He said, it doesn't mean you won't be wounded. Right. But what it means is you can recover. That's right. Amen. If you choose to. Amen. Talk, Amen. We read the scripture that came from Genesis chapter 20, and we're all familiar with the story of Joseph. We're familiar with how God was working with him at a young age, probably around the age of 17. And we're familiar with how he had this dream, and he would go and tell his family about this dream. The brothers turned against him. The father looked at him with some disdain to the point that his family put him in a pit, sold him, and he went down into Egypt. But Joseph must have understood that he was an indestructible child. Teach, man. Because whatever the family did to him, right. he did not allow himself and the circumstances to freeze him. That's right. He did not allow what his family done to him. Even though God was working with him, he did not allow his circumstances to render him ineffective. He went down into Egypt as a slave. But because he understood that he's an indestructible child, God rose him yes, he did. to second in command. Yes, he did. Even to the point that he brought his, his family down in Egypt because the famine was coming. God was working with him at a young age. He was. Right. Because God knew this is not about you. Right. And even Joseph said, but it was to save many people alive. That's right, brother. There are some things that we are going through and we have went through in our childhood. Mm -hmm. And it follows us all the way up till today. Yes. And sometimes we wonder, why did it happen to me? But I want to shift your thinking. Shift it, brother. It happened. But did it stop you? Talk. It happened to you. But look where you are today. Yes. I want you to understand yes. God to tell you that you are my child. Yes. And you're indestructible. Yes. Now, what does indestructible mean? Indestructible, it means incapable of being destroyed. <laughs> incapable of being destroyed, ruined, or rendered ineffective. Incapable of being destroyed, ruined, or rendered ineffective. Now, when you go back into your childhood, because we have to, we've been talking over the course of time about mental health. We've been talking about traumas. Yes. And the only way we can understand how indestructible we are, teach, we have to go back to those times. Yes, yes, sir. As bad as those times may have been, look where you are today. Amen. Look where you are 
Yes. You have to look back yes, sir. to appreciate yes, sir. what God has done for you. Amen. 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 We've been going through the Old Testament. And we read about the last judge, which was Samuel. And what we're going to do today, meet me in Samuel chapter 1. We're going to look at the book of Samuel. We're going to look at the life of Samuel. And we're going to look at the life of Samuel and see if we can see our lives and some of the traumas that we have faced in our lives. In Samuel chapter 1, we know that there was a man named Elkanah. He had two wives, one Penea and one Hannah. One had, he had two, he had children by Penea. And she turns around and she starts to mock Hannah because she couldn't have any children. And as they was going up to the temple, Hannah was sitting off by herself. And she's looking because Penea is teasing her about not having children. Yes, she is. So she get in earnest prayer to God. She prays for a child. She said, God, if you just bless me with a child, yes. I will dedicate him back to you. And then the high priest asked her, are you drunk? She said, I'm not drunk. She said, but I'm petitioning God yes. because I want a child. So as time passes, God blesses her mm -hmm. with a child. Yes. And that child was named Samuel. And as Elkanah, they was going back up to the temple. And Elkanah, he asked his wife and the child, she said, he said, would you come with me to the temple? She said, not so. She said, I want to stay here until my child is weaned. And then once my child is weaned, then I'll take him to the temple and I'll dedicate him <clears throat> to God. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 22 and 23, where we just talked, and it said, But Hannah went not up, for she said to her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until he was weaned. Now, when you look at the backdrop or the history of that time, that child normally in the, in the ancient time, the child would be weaned up until he's about two or three years old. Okay. And now when he hits that age, Hannah knows I've done everything I can for him. But what I have to do, I have to honor what I told God. Right. If you bless me with a child. Yes. I'm going to dedicate him back to yes. you. We That's right. Yes. That's we can, brother. We pray to God for children. We pray to God for whatever you may ask for. And God, if you do this for me, yes. I'll do this. Right, brother. God blessed her with a child. And God also afforded her the opportunity to raise that child up to a point to where she knew now, God, I have to let you do your part. Mm -hmm. right. Now she goes up to the temple. And when she gets there, she has this two to three year old boy with her. You know the hardest thing for her to do? <laughs> is to let go of that child. That's right. Yeah. She gotta do it. He's two to three years old. And this young boy, needing the love of his mother, yes. he's now in the temple. His mother leaves him. And at two to three years old, he no longer has a mother mm -hmm. because now she's not in his life. Correct. She shows up once every year. Mm -hmm. And after that, he sees her no more. I'm talking to somebody. Talk to us, brother. I'm talking to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. Because somebody has went through something in your life, but mama may, may not have been present in my life. Correct. Or daddy may not have been present in my life. Right. But I want you to understand you are indestructible. Yeah. Right. Don't allow that to render you ineffective That's right. for what God has for you to do. That's right. Because there may have been a reason. That's right, brother. When Samuel, at the ages of two or three, he may not have understood what was going on. But Hannah made a vow. <clears throat> and sometimes what happens to us in our younger years, yes, sir. we don't have an idea of why did it happen, but we're asking God, we're asking people, why did it happen to me? Teach, brother. Why did that happen to me? Why was I treated this way? Why did mama walk out? Why did daddy walk out? Why didn't they appreciate me? Those are valid questions. Right. But also what you have to do. If we could talk to Samuel. Now we could say, Samuel, before you was born, your mother prayed to God for you. Yep. Your mother talked to God for you. 
Your mother said, if you would bless me with a child, Samuel, you're that child. I need you to understand your mother didn't walk out on you. Your mother was honoring God. Correct. Yeah. Because God blessed me or blessed her with you. And now Samuel, even though he sees she's walking out, he has an understanding. Yes. Of where his mother was where his father was. Teach me. And what happens is when we're going through our traumatic problems, Teach. we have to go back in those problems, right. yeah. know that it hurts me, acknowledge that it hurts, yeah. but then go before the problem. There you go. So I can realize how did it get to this point. Right. Because at two to three years old, he has no mother. He has no father. He only has Eli the priest. That's correct. When you're thinking about it, do not leave God. God will always take care of his people. God has a calling on each of our lives. Yes, he does. Amen. When it seems like you just can't make it. Right. God says, I got you. I got you. Amen. I got you. Because you are indestructible. That's right. Yes. Do not allow your circumstances, no matter what they are. Right. Do not allow them. To make you think you're worthless. Right. You're right. You're not. Right. You're not. Give me a second. Uh-huh. Take your time. And while you see this, while you're dealing with your traumas, I want you to understand there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Okay. With crying. Right. There's nothing wrong with being angry because it happened. Right. There's nothing wrong with you because I'm sad. Right. There's nothing wrong when I get upset because I think about what happened to me in my life. Correct. It's supposed to happen. You have emotions. Right. Yeah. You cannot be afraid to allow your emotions while you are trying to overcome your traumas. Amen. Right. Amen. The emotions are what help you get over your traumas. Amen. But what happens is. When I'm going through it, if you are a man, man, you're not supposed to be. I'm a man, so I'm not crying about nothing. I, I can take care of it. No, you can't. No, you can't. Because you are killing yourself on the inside, and God is trying to get let you know if you don't allow those emotions to come through. Right. While you are going through it, God, I need you. Right. God, I need you. Call on. Call on. I need you. But we sit and we were saying, I love to pray for you. Right. Mm -hmm. If you are back in your mind's eye, in your worst time, do you give God the praise? There you go, brother. In your worst time, do you give God the praise? Right. Because if you wasn't giving it to him then, and it has been following you all the way up into your adulthood, you look back on it and realize, God, I'm here today because you made me indestructible. Yes, yes. You yes. made me yes. indestructible. Yes. I can appreciate now. So what I went through. There you go. Yeah. I had some wounds from it. Yeah. I had some struggles from it. Yeah. Right. I had some times where it made me hesitate. Right. But God, because you made me indestructible, yes, indestructible I am who I am today. Right. That's right, brother. Amen. Because of you. That's Amen. right. Amen. Samuel, at two years old, he sees this. His mother leaves him. She comes in, and you can imagine as a child. You want the comfort. Yes. You want the love of your mother and your father. Right. He see her walking to the temple, and he's running with excitement. Mama is coming to get me. Right. Mm -hmm. But she gives him a coat. Yes. Bible don't say it, but she probably kisses him on the head. I'm sure. Son, I love you. And he watches his mother walk away. Walk away. Two to three years old. Mm -hmm. He turns, but you never hear the Bible say it stopped him no. from his purpose. No. Right. She left him there to be an attendant yes. in the temple. That's correct. Even though his mother walked away, it still didn't render him ineffective. Right. right. He still carried on what God left him to do right. in that temple. Where are you? Where are you? Right now, when you think back on what may have been done to you, where are you? Right. Have you ever taken time 
and given your parents or whoever have raised you? Have you given them the benefit of the doubt? Let me try to understand. There you go, brother. Let me try to understand where they were. Right. Because if you can understand what they were, right. you can then better appreciate right. yes. your situation. There you yeah. go. But if you don't try to understand where they were, and the only thing you want to be, oh, woe is me, because they shouldn't do this to me, they shouldn't do that to me. But when Samuel looked back, teach, man. You know, the reason my mama left me here. Right. She made a lot. Because she was honoring God. Right. She was a lot. She did the best that she could do. Yes. And it was nothing else she could do to that point, so she gave me to God. Gave me yes. to God. Man, I appreciate my mama for doing there that. There you go. But there are some parents that even though they know there's nothing else I can do for you, but I'm going to hold on to you. Right. I'm going to keep you. Uh huh. And rather than doing the best thing, we think doing the best thing is keeping you. Yeah. <laughs> we think doing the best Teach, thing brother. is keeping you. What are you talking about? Rather than giving you over to God, yes. I need to keep you because you're my child. Yeah. But Hannah understood, just let me raise him until he's about two or three. From the age of birth all the way up to probably two to three years old is the most important time. It is. In a child's life. Correct. And God afforded her that time. He yes. did. To give him everything you need in this time. Correct. And when you have given him everything you need in this time, bring him to me. Bring him yes. to me. Yes, Lord. And she could walk in that temple. Yes. See her baby. But she could walk off knowing. Right. I did everything. Praise Lord. That I could do for you. Amen. 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 Good hand. And Samuel. Yes, sir. Continued on. Because when you look at his life, he somewhat he understood. That I'm going to <clears throat> right. And as a child, some, well, he's too young to remember. No, he's not. Mm -hmm. No, he's not. Because if you go back to your traumatic times. Yes, sir. When people say, you shouldn't be able to remember that. But I do. But you do. But I do. And there's nothing wrong with remembering it. Exactly. God wants you to remember it. Exactly. But what God also wants you to know, look at those times and look at where you are because I made you in this trouble. Yes. Teach, brother. The reason I did this, the reason you had to go through this, because you remember Joseph? Yes, sir. Joseph said, what you meant for evil, talking to Satan. Yeah. I know he's talking to the brother, but just look past the brother because it's Satan. Yes. What you meant for evil. Yes. God meant for good. Yes. When they threw me in a pit, leaving me for dead, you thought that it was going to affect me to the point that I wasn't going to work to my fullest capability. You meant it for evil, but God put me in that pit for some good. Teach, Amen. man. It wasn't meant for me to stay with these brothers. Say it again. It wasn't meant for me to stay with Say these brothers. Amen. So God had to put me in a pit because God knew that it was some people coming along that was going to get me out of these pit and take me down into Egypt because God knew a famine was coming back in my hometown. Yeah. Right. And when he saw that famine coming back in my hometown, God said, Joseph, I need to put you in the pit. I didn't understand why it was going on with me at the time because God showed me a vision and a calling on my life. All I was trying to do was share it with my That's all. All I wanted to do was share it with that's my family. All. But God trying to let you know, family, they couldn't have it. They're not ready for where you're trying to go. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to have to go through. It's yeah. separating that's going yes. to happen. Yes. Yes. And when the separating happens, it's going to happen from your family. Yes. And yes, when Lord. you allow that trauma to say it's going to, it's going to pause me for a minute, there's nothing else I can do because I don't understand why my family turned their back on me. Your family didn't turn your back. It was God working with you while you was at a young age trying to prepare you to bring somebody else along in the future. Joseph Amen. understood that. Amen. Joseph understood that. Amen. So when his brothers faced him, and they said, you know, he's going to pay us back mm -hmm. for what we did. That's what Joseph they said. wasn't concerned about what happened no, to him. Sir. Because Joseph understood I'm indestructible, and the reason God put me here is to save many people. Exactly. Yes. The, the reason why we go through what we go through, no matter how it is, whether it's physical abuse, whether it's mental abuse, whether it's verbal abuse, yes. whatever it may be, the reason we have went through this and God has blessed us to make it through it because somebody else is coming down the line. Exactly. Yes. And when that somebody else come down the line, Come on. God is looking for you for that same Come on. that God gave you in your traumas. God is looking for you yeah. after you have healed yourself. Yeah. God is looking for you to give that same comfort that you had. Give it to them. That's what yeah. the book says. Yeah. Joseph could do that.
what the book say, brother. Joseph could do that. Samuel, two years old. He's still pushing forward. He's still pushing forward. Mama have left me, but God has a calling on my life. Yes. Daddy agreed with Mama uh -huh. that she would leave me in the temple, but God has a calling on my life. You ask Samuel, what's more important, Samuel, being with your Mama and Daddy or honoring your call? Talk, brother. Samuel said, what's more important? I love my Mama and Daddy. Sure we do. I needed my mom and dad. Sure we do. But I understand now because I've had the backdrop and the information on mom and daddy. I understand now that God had a purpose for there me. There you go. I understand God had a purpose for me. <laughs> and when Samuel understood that, he can continue on. Right. But as he was working in the temple, as I said, her mom and dad, his mom would come up every week, every year. Yeah. She would bring him a coat. Right. And Eli, he would see it. When Eli saw, saw it, he blessed him. He did. Meet me if you will. Excuse me. Meet me if you will at Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. When you get there, say amen. And when everybody say amen, read it, you read. Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. And it reads. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him Eli. from year to year. And when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice, Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, the Lord, and said, The Lord gives seed to this woman for the loan which was lent unto the Lord. And they, and they went home. Read verse 21. And it says, And the Lord visited Hannah, so she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. Mm. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Problem number two with Samuel. And I've heard people say this. I watched a young man talk to his grandmother, crying. His question was, why did my mama mm -hmm. keep the other children and didn't keep me? Mm -hmm. Samuel, serving in the temple, sees and knows his mother is having other children. Yes. But she didn't keep him. Right. And somewhere in our life, that young man that I saw, I know that was a problem because he's wondering. And if we have been going through problems, we're wondering, why did mama keep everybody else and they put me away? Teach. Why did mama and daddy not do for me like they did for everybody else? Samuel had that question. He did, brother. Samuel had that. And it's a valid question. It's a valid question. It's a valid question. But with any trauma, there's always some understanding that we need before the trauma. Thank you, sir. When Samuel saw this, if that was the question he had in his head, Eli, if when he's talking to him, because that's his mentor. Yes. When he said, Eli, I just don't understand. Why did my mama give me up? Right. But she's keeping everybody else. I don't understand. Eli could tell Samuel, Samuel, when your mother had you, she could she didn't think she was gonna have any children. Right. She prayed to God, you was a blessing to your mother. Mm -hmm. She didn't give you up and keep the rest. If Samuel, if you watch your mother, when they came to the temple, honestly serving God, doing everything she needed, I saw what your mother had done. Correct. I saw that she dedicated you back to God. Right. And by me being a priest, I partitioned God for your mother. Yes. And I talked to God and I said, God, may you bless them with other children. Yes. And God began to bless them with other children because what she did for you. Mm. And now Samuel can look at his mama different. in a different light. There you go. She didn't give me up. No. She didn't give me up. I was a blessing. Right. And then God blessed her later on. And put her in a state where she could afford to take care of those children. There you go, brother. But she also left me in a state where God could also take care of me. And I could flourish in my calling. 
There you go. Man. Because what we have to, we have to revisit those traumas. We do. We have to revisit them with the hopes of getting an understanding of go. why these things occurred. But if you only want to look at your traumas as woe is me, and rather than listening and finding the solution to it, you're always going to have problems. They're going to follow you from your childhood to where they are now, even on in the future. Yes, because you're not looking for the solution. But when you look for the solution. Correct, brother. Accept what's given to you. Exactly. And you can accept it when you understand right. that I am an indestructible child. Yes. God built me that way. Drop the mic. God built me that way. God knew, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13, that there was no temptation that's common to man. But with every temptation, God has given you a way to escape. Even at a young child, God put me through some things, blessed me to go through it, but God brought me. Didn't he do it? God brought me. Didn't he do it? And there's a song that said he hadn't brought me this far. Amen. Right. To lead, me. to lead me. No, he hadn't. And if each and every one of us are honest with ourselves, we all have a story. We all have a trauma that we can tell I didn't think I was going to make it. Right. At some point in time, I didn't know right from left, up and down. I didn't know when the wind was blowing. I didn't know when it was raining. But God saw fit. Yes. yes. But God saw fit yes. to bring this old indestructible child yeah. through the storm. Out of class. And now that I'm through the storm, I can praise him. Yes. And now that I'm through the storm, I can look back at that storm yes. and appreciate the storm. Yes. Yes. And now that I'm through the storm and I've healed from the storm, yes. when I see Brother Justin dealing with something, there you go. I can go back into that time that used to be traumatic to me. Yes. I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. Because I once was there. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you, God can bring you through. Yes, yes. he can. Yes. It don't seem like it now. All right. But you just hold on. Hold oh. on. Because a change is coming. It's coming. Yes. You just hold on. Hold yes. on. A change Amen. is coming. Yes. I remember when Peter walked off in the water. Lord, if it's you. Go on, walk where it was. If it's you, bid me to come out there. Yes. And he walked off. Yes. And I know what other people was looking at. Yes, they did. Peter, where you going? Mm. What you doing? The Lord called me. Yes. yes. The Lord called me. Yes. And he begins to walk on the water. He yes. does. Yes. But a little storm mm. started. Right. And his focus left off of Jesus. Yeah. Right. And he started focusing on the storm. Right. And the Bible said you can start seeing. He going down. And he started sinking. Right. Now if my knees go out, we're going to do what Peter did. Lord, help me. <laughs> but he started going down. But what he knew, even though the storms of life is raging around me, yeah. right. I got a Savior I can yes, call. Lord. Right. And when he called on God, free, boy. Now the people that's looking at him thinking he was crazy for getting out there. Right. Them same people seeing him now walking hand in hand. Right. Okay. With Jesus. All right. right. Now. And when you're walking hand in hand with Jesus, he tells you, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? That you was indestructible? That you was indestructible. Didn't I tell you? Yes, sir. If you just keep your faith in me, yes. nothing's going to hurt you. Right. Didn't I tell you? Didn't that? I tell you? And if you didn't believe it, didn't you read it about Samuel? Didn't you read it? His mother left him. She had other children. But he carried on. He didn't allow his circumstances to render him in effect. Talk. And are you sitting out here today because some things has happened to you and it's rendering you in effect? In effect. Teach, brother. Because if it is, God is trying to tell you. He's trying to tell you. It should. Because I made you. Right. I made you in my image. Right. Yes. And in my likeness. Amen. And if nothing can get to me, you're indestructible. You made the same. Amen. Now, it doesn't mean you won't get that you won't get hurt. Amen. Right. It doesn't mean that you won't have any bruises. Right. right. It doesn't mean that you're going to be by yourself at right. times. Right. But what it does mean, as I looked at that, that little honey badger, and the, and the photographers and, and the scientography people, they were looking at it, they said, well, he must be dead. Uh-huh. They said, he must be dead. But that little honey badger knew, I'm not dead. I'm just allowing God to do his part. Yes, Lord. And what, hey, yes, Lord. See, when you're going through your traumas, if it takes time for you to sit back and just sit down and wait for a minute to take your hands off of it, let him take your hands off of it. And let the people say, man, that really took him out. <laughs> man, what he went through, it really took him out. 
Yeah. And then you can say, no, it didn't take me out. No, sir. Mm -hmm. Because I'm indestructible. Right. right. When you saw me sitting back waiting, I was allowing God yes. mm -hmm. to do his part. Yes. yes. Because that's what we have to understand. God made us this way. Yes, God has did. built us yes, he has. to withstand the things that are going on. Yes, he God has. has built me. When things go on, God has rebuilt built a resiliency in me that go. when it happens, yes. I can bounce back from it. There you yeah. go. Yes, now, but the problem Amen. is, the, the problem is, do you want to bounce back? That's the question. See, yes. you have to ask yourself, do mm. you want to bounce back? Because, see, bouncing back, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It's not, but it can be done. Yes. Bouncing back is not easy. But it can be done. Yes. See, and what you have to get past, you don't get past the other people. You have to get past the mindset Amen. that you have allowed to set in with you. Amen. To, oh, woe is me. I can't do this. I can't do that. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for her, if it wasn't for this. But if I can say, if it wasn't for God. That's yes. it. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be where I am. Amen. Amen. I would not be where I am. Yes. Now we look at Samuel's environment. Mama has left him. Dad is no longer in the picture. He's left at a temple. His mother thinks she's leaving him in some safety. Let's look at his environment. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, or chapter 2, verses 12 and 17. Do you have? Yes, sir. 1 Samuel, listen at this now. 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verses 12 and 17. Read. Now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial, and they knew not the Lord. And the priest's custom with, uh, with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came, while the flesh was seething uh, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. And he struck it into a pan or a kettle or a cauldron or a pot, and all the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh until all the Israelites that came thither. And also before, the, uh, and also before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn, burn the fat presently, then take as much as their soul desire, and there would, yeah. and then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it to me now. And if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. And read verse 22. Mm. Now Eli was very old and heard all these things his son did unto Israel. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the mm. congregation. Jody. Now, do you see his environment? He has examples before him, which is supposed to be the sons. Yes. They are the sons of the priest. So he's looking, at it, looking for a good example to follow but the Bible said that they were sons of Belial. In other words, they cared nothing for God. Right. They were sons of the devil. Yep. Yes. And whatever the priest was supposed to do, they did the exact opposite. They did the opposite, yeah. brother. They did the exact opposite. All the way up to the point to where whenever they saw women at the door, they would have sex mm -hmm. in front of the temple door. Yes, sir. Get them. Samuel's environment, he sees that this is his environment it's he's possible. growing up in. But Samuel made a choice. He did, brother. I'm not going to be the circumstances right. of my environment. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let my environment shape my thinking because God has done something for me. God has made me indestructible. You hear, well, the reason I'm like this is because this is how mama was. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm like this is because this is how daddy was. Mm -hmm. The reason I do these things is because this is the environment that I grew up in. You don't have to be a product of your environment. You don't. That is by choosing. It is. We heard a couple of weeks ago that was a tomb, and that was a raw, a raw stone that was rolled back. And during that lesson, they said, all you have to do is just get up, Come up. and walk out of the tomb. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not coming in the tomb to pick you up. I know I'm not coming in because I have enough weight on my own to carry. Yes, sir. You make the choice. When you're sitting in this tomb and everywhere you look is devilishness. Yes. It's sexual immorality. Yes. It's drunkenness. Yes. It's drugs. That's my environment. But you look to the hills. Look to the hills. I can see the sunlight. Right. Right beyond those doors. Yes. But you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice. This is where I am. 
but that's where I need to be. Exactly. Amen. But the Bible says when you read all of that, verse 18 says, but Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Right. <laughs> in the midst of all of the things that was going on in his environment, Teach, man. Samuel kept his eyes focused on God. Yes, he did. He didn't allow, he didn't use the excuse of, well, they're doing it, and this, this is all I saw, so this is what I had to do. Samuel had one mentor. He did. That was Eli. That was Eli. Now, was Eli a good person? According to what God said, there were some things he did right. Raising his children, he did wrong. But he did. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, God put people in your life. He does. Mm -hmm. And some of those people may not care anything about God. Correct. But there may be a resource. Right. You need from that person. That's correct. They are not, he or she is not put there for total dependency on. No. They are put there just to get that resource. Right. Samuel is in the temple just to get the resource from Eli. Teach me how to take care of the temple. That's correct, brother. And regardless of what was going on in his environment, the only thing he focused on, teach me how to take care of the temple. That's what his mind And while the brothers was doing everything they were doing, Samuel was still... I'm taking care of the temple. That's right. Regardless of what they do, I'm taking care of the That's temple. That's right. I'm not going to allow, and I'm pretty sure they tried to persuade him, oh, because now Josephus said when I was reading the Antiquities, uh -huh. now Samuel is about 12 years old. Uh-huh. 12 years old, right at the prime of his teenage years. Uh -huh. And I, one, one time my son and I went down to the police station, because he was 12, getting mm -hmm. ready to turn 13. And I took him down and we talked to one of the officers. And he said, son, let me tell you, he said, right now, you're at a pivotal point in your life. He said, "If you, I've seen plenty of children. You have one of two ways to go. If you make the wrong decision, at this point in your life, he said, it just all goes down here. Out of clear. But at this point in your life, I've also seen, when they made the right decision, I look back at those children now, and I see them flourishing. Yes. And Samuel, at the age of 12, he's at a point, I have to make the right decision. That's correct. And you're at a, at a point now in your life, whether you're at a young age or whether you're at an old age, with these traumas, you're at a point in your life, you have to choose to make the right decision. Right. You do. Right. You have to choose to make the right decision. Nobody can choose it for you. Right. It's going to hurt. You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. But you choose to walk with God. Right. That's what Samuel did. Right. He chose regardless of his environment. God, I'm going to continue your call. So now the question is, how do we, how do we do that today? I'm going to give you a couple of things. We'll come down to it again. This is what we do. First, we have to acknowledge your feelings. Allow yourself to feel the emotions associated with your trauma. It's okay to be upset, angry, or sad. Acknowledging these feelings is an essential step towards healing. Seek support. Mm -hmm. Reach out to friends, family, or support groups. Talking about your experiences can help you process them. That's right. You don't have to. The key is you don't have to go through this alone. That's correct. You do not have to, but some of us choose to. And they can't help it. You don't have to go through this alone. I, my wife and I saw a young man down at, the, at Walmart one night, and his mother was going through the pain. He was a single child. And he and I talked. And as I'm listening to him, he's thinking he had to take all this, and, and he's just breaking down. Yeah. Mm. I said, young man, listen to me. I said, you can't do this by yourself. Right. I said, I'm going to give you my number. Right. I said, call me. Right. I said, please don't try to take this on. He said, man, because I'm doing this, and I can't barely take care of myself, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. I said, because you're trying to do it by yourself. <laughs> you cannot do this by yourself. You can't do it. You cannot get over your traumas by yourself. If you could, why are they still with you to okay. this time? Okay, okay. <laughs> Seek support. Seek some support from friends, from families. Even, it says, seek some professional help. Yes, sir. Don't be ashamed. That's right. When your friends are not good enough, when your family is not good enough, you seek some professional help. That's right, brother. And there are some people that will tell you, church people, you don't need professional help. The church is all you need. <laughs> don't believe that foolishness. Not when all of them jacked up. Don't believe that foolishness. Now, do you need the church? Absolutely. Right. 
But see, God is the ruler of it all. He is. Amen. So God also set things up outside the he church. He did that. That when the church is not efficient in this particular need, right. we can give you all the help, we can give you all the talk therapy, we can listen to everything you go through. Right. But at some point, you have to realize, I need more. Exactly. Mm. I need more. So I need to seek some professional help. Right. Also, self-care. Yes, sir. Prioritize self-care. Get enough rest. Eat well. Exercise. And engage in activities that bring joy. Mm -hmm. Mindful practices such as meditation yes, or deep breathing can also help. That's right. Educate yourself. Yes, sir. If you're dealing with a trauma, take time to look up that trauma. Find out what it is. Find out what are the causes. Find out what are the effects. Yep. Because the more you know about what you're going through, yep. the better off you are with dealing with it. Right. But a lot of times what happens is when I'm dealing with something, if the doctor diagnosed me with this, you're I'm right not going to read anything about it because it scares me. It's going to continue to scare you because you won't take time to study what you are going through. Right. Whatever your issues is, take time to yourself. Right. Gather the proper information. So when your mind starts playing tricks on you, yes. you can say, well, that's not it. No. Nope. Because some, when you, myself, when they first, they was talking to me about you may have cancer. Mm -hmm. And by the, by the grace of God, I don't. Right. But when they told me, when my nose started running, I thought, oh, there it is. That's a sign. <laughs> that's a sign. When my chest started hurting. Yep. That's, that's a sign. I'm diagnosing myself because I'm not doing anything to find information about what they're telling me. But when I started studying, right. honestly started studying it, I didn't cut off the parts that I didn't want to read about. Right. Because see, when you do that, you're not being honest with yourself. Exactly. Right. See, being honest with yourself, the things that I want to hear, be good about reading those things. Yeah. I like to hear about that. That was a good thing. Bro, man, I read about this and God said I can overcome it. Right. But right down below it, you may lose your, oh, I'm not reading that. I don't want to read that. But that's where your healing is. That's where it is. All I want is the good things. I don't want to read about the adverse effects of it. But God said when you read about this, it brings you a calm. Exactly. It brings down your anxieties. Yes. It gives you a sense of peace. Yes. Because God, if this is what you designed for me, I thank you for what you have blessed me with. Thus far. Amen. Amen. Take time. Gather knowledge about what you're dealing with and what you're going through. That's right. Avoid self-blame. Remember that trauma is not your fault. Right. Be kind to yourself. Right. And avoid blaming yourself That's for correct. what happened. That's correct. There are some things you don't. You had no control over. That's correct. <laughs> but God knows as a child, your parents go through a divorce or whatever else may happen. They did it because of me. It has nothing to do with you. Not there are just some things in the world that's going to happen to you. Correct. But God, what God wants you to understand, even though it happens, you are an indestructible yes, child. Even when it's not your fault, right. you still can make it through it. That's correct. Create a safety plan. Mm -hmm. If you experience triggers or intense emotions, have a plan in place. Identify coping strategies or people you can turn to for support. Yes. Remember, healing and traumas take time. They do. And everyone's journey is unique. Mm -hmm. Be patient with yourself and consider seeking professional guidance. Mm -hmm. And when you do all those things, then you can truly embrace your life. That's right, bro. In Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. John says, as we come down to a close, he that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son has not life. First Peter, as we talked about, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. When you follow those steps, then you can be resilient. You can have that, that, that bounce back. That's right. You can, God says, how do you do it? Ephesians chapter 6. You put on the whole arm of God. Put it on. You put on the, don't put part of it on. God said the prescription is. Yes, sir. You have to put the whole armor on. 
that you may withstand all of the fiery darts. Yes, sir. Of the devil. Of the devil. Because they're coming. He coming. And you're going to have bruises. You're going to have, and that's simply what they are. Yeah. But in time, those bruises are here. They heal. They are here. When you take the proper steps, they are here. Last couple of verses. And realize that God is your protection. Psalm 21, 8 verses. We'll read this and we'll come down to a close. Psalms 121, mm -hmm. it reads, I will lift up mine eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. Yes, he is. The Lord is thy shade Amen. upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out mm -hmm. and thy coming in. Yes. From this time forth and even forevermore. forevermore. Mm -hmm. The conclusion. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, it is he that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. He'll never do. And David said, I have been young, and I have been old. He said, but I've never seen a child of God forsaken or begging for bread. Church, I want you to understand. That's right. You're God's child. That's right. And because you're God's child, you're indestructible. That's right, brother. And even if you're not God's child, because we didn't read it. But the Bible says that when Samuel was going through what he was going through, yes. he didn't know anything about God then. Uh -uh. The word of God had not been revealed to him. Uh -uh. So God was taking care of him he was. all the way up until the time that the opportunity afforded him to become God's child. That's yeah. right. And if you're not a member of God's church, God has been affording you the time. Yes. And he's been giving you protection <clears throat> and giving you the opportunity. And the opportunity is now. God says, the day you hear my voice, or not your heart. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. You don't know what tomorrow will bring, but what you do know, God has brought you this far. And God is affording you the time now. If you haven't given your life to him, God has given you the time right now. And if we have given, and if you have given your life to God, just understand, no matter what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, God made me indestructible. He did. And I can have it. There are five things you must do to become a member of the one and only church that, you, that can be found in the New Testament scripture. First, you must hear the gospel. Believe what you have heard. Repent of your sin. Fourth, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Fifth, be buried in the water of grave of baptism. If there is anyone within the sound of my voice that would like to do so, you can do so. Have you sing the song of invitation.